definitely prefer the heavier Jonah Hill, for sure. He's funnier when he's fat. I don't know what to say. Forgive the mess and what have you, it's one of those days. Yeah, so that being said, your boy Brass Tax, back in this bitch. Now, I'm not going to give too much away on this movie because I don't like to give spoilers because some of you may or may not have seen it. When I saw the trailers of this movie, I was like, wow, this is a comedy. Same director as the Hangover movie. So I was just like, okay, this is going to be one of them other R-rated comedies. It had funny moments in it, but it definitely wasn't a comedy. It was quite serious in a lot of respects. Uh, Lord of War, Nicolas Cage, awesome film if you haven't seen it already. It's of that ilk. It fits in very nice to that kind of story. Miles Teller, Jonah Hill. Both of them are awesome in this movie, especially Jonah Hill. He is a very good actor, right? He's one of those few actors that can that can pull off. He can be very funny, but he can also be very serious and he can be somewhat psychotic. Yeah, he's a good actor, 100%. He's not just a comedian. He's a good actor, in my opinion. Miles Teller as well. He's been fantastic, although a couple of his recent movies are Fantastic Four, Say No More. Whiplash, amazing film. Edge of your seat stuff in a lot of ways. Two best friends who become arms dealers. One of them already has a kind of background in arms dealing, but uh, it's really about all the trouble they get into and the lengths they go to to make certain deals, to sell guns to certain places, to certain people, and about how it affects their relationships with their families and uh, primarily with each other. Guns, drugs, and lots of money. Two best friends. Shit's going to hit the fan. And boy does it. Because it's based on a true story, there's a lot of fact and fiction in this just to make it more entertaining, I guess, as a movie. Don't go into this thinking, this shit unfolded the way it really unfolded, because it's not true. One of my favourite movies of the year, I, I enjoyed it. It's funny because although I was expecting a comedy, what I got was kind of what I expected in terms of how the story played out, but it was just a different, it was just more serious. I definitely recommend it. It's a really good movie. You'd want to pick it up, for sure. So how's a 4K stack up? Shot in 3.4K. Visual effects rendered in 2K. Digital intermediate, 2K. Upscale to 4K. DTS HD Master Audio 5.1. The first thing you'll notice is the HDR. Immediately, the colors are vibrant, bright, and a lot of the shit just pops off the screen. What the HDR does a fantastic job of doing, once again, is bringing out details in the littlest of things because of the light and darkness. Now, in terms of texture quality, especially where they are, there's a scene that involves a lot of guns and a lot of crates and bullets. Those things, you will notice the sense of depth and obviously detail. Sharpness hair and everything, uh, the pupils, you see every little thing. Colors do pop out. The tone of it is very natural, right? It's natural, but just brighter for sure. There's nothing I've seen on the movie which will make me think, wow. Some of the shots will be like, okay, that's actually quite nice. The detail and sharpness does really pop off the screen. In some cases, you do feel like you're actually there with them, but it doesn't give you that wow, wow factor because there's, as a movie itself, you're not really looking at special effects. It's not a special effects movie, so I guess you won't be floored by a lot of things. There are special effects in the movie, but I didn't notice them, which tells you the implementation of special effects, however little they were, were done very well to the point that you didn't feel anything was too artificial. It was good job. Scenes in the dark actually did show a lot of detail. It does a very good job of taking the light and the darkness, putting it together without losing detail. And you notice that on a lot of the dark shots, for sure. There is noise in it, but it's not overpowering. I remember when I watched Blu-ray, I said, okay, this looks good. There's, there's actually quite a lot of detail there, but it was an A1 Blu-ray and I felt like, okay, the 4K of this is definitely gonna improve and it did improve. And the first thing you did notice, especially with this, was the color. You can definitely see the wider color gamut. It's, it's pretty obvious within the first opening five minutes. And that's, that's, that's really it, people. I can't say much more about this as it's, uh, all I will say is it's a brilliant film. It's definitely an improvement over the Blu-ray. Uh, and there are certain scenes in there where you're going to look at and say, okay, I didn't notice that, I didn't notice that, I didn't notice that. And if you haven't watched it before, then I just I just pick up the 4K Blu-ray version anyway. Is it worth picking it up for full price? Yeah, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's not going to be in the top 10 in terms of visual quality, but it's a, it's, it's a good improvement. And I think the strength of this uh, 4K Blu-ray is definitely the HDR implementation for sure. And that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, oi, listen. 
you guys better just subscribe, goddammit, because your boy is on his A-game. Your boy is bringing out videos after videos after videos, you know? So you better just subscribe, shit. Doesn't hurt to click a button. It might do. I don't know. But in any case, you guys take care, and we are going to catch up soon. All right, people. Yeah.